Thank you, I'm moving forward. When you're thankful, it's hard to be bitter. This is hard to be jealous when you're thankful. Hard to be in strife. It's hard to have power. Oh my goodness. Y'all know the only word that God has given to me so far concerning 2018 is thy kingdom come. I see the light. The kingdom of God is about to manifest itself right here through the people of God that are willing to believe and consider not anything. You have a promise from God. He's going to manifest himself in ways that you cannot believe. Kingdom of God is coming. When you rise up out of your dead area and God's about to rise you up, you won't have to explain a thing. The glory of God that is about to manifest itself all over your life will cause men and women to flood in from the north, the south, the east, and the west to hear about what God's doing with you. It's our time! It's our time! It's our time! Our God's not dead, he's alive! God is rising. Hey, man. Well, if you guys could go ahead and grab hands with the person next to you, I'm going to go ahead and pray before we get started. Amen. But Lord God, we just thank you for this time. And I just thank you for this opportunity to come and to hear from you. Lord God, I pray that your people's lives will not be the same as a result of hearing what you have to say. And Lord God, as we sit here on the first Sunday of 2018, we declare that this will be a year like none other. And we just thank you for all that is going to take place. And we thank you for just having us be a part of your kingdom and all that comes a part of that, Lord God. And I just pray that there's less of me and all of you speak to your people exactly what you have for them to hear. And I pray that no one leaves here with anything missing, lacking, or broken, but you deliver all that you want for them to hear, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Well, hug the person next to you. Tell them they're beautiful. You're glad to see them. I was, I was kind of laughing at myself because um, first service, you know, I, I prayed a, a similar type of prayer um, to, you know, God, I pray that no one leaves here with anything missing and that you deliver everything they need to hear. And God said, yeah, that's why you was up there for so long. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. But what we are going to do is God declared an awesome word over our church for 2018. And he said, thy kingdom come. And so that just sparks so much of a, of a journey into understanding what exactly that means. And like I say, we started that journey uh, last week at 11 o'clock at night in the New Year's Eve service. So I'm not going to take for granted that you was here at 11 o'clock at night at a New Year's Eve service, and you have everything that there is to hear about this. And so I'm going to go ahead and just put parts of that into what God is saying today and wants to say to you today. And so for those of you guys that were here New Year's Eve or here on Wednesday night, faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That's what a preacher says when he's about to repeat stuff, by the way. <laughs> 
I said, they only drop that when they about to say something I've already heard, but amen. <laughs> so if you could, I want you to open up your Bibles to Philippians 4 in the King James Version, and we're going to go down to verse 19. And we're just going to have a conversation about our expectation. What are you expecting in 2018? You know, I tell people, I, I, I told them before, I said, you know, I don't know about y'all, but when I'm expecting something to come to me, I tend to check for it. And one of the greatest examples of that is, is with your mail. How many of you guys know, like, when you when you expecting, when you've ordered something and you expect it for it to arrive, how many of you guys know you check for it in, when, at home when you leave and you check off on it when you're coming back? Why? You have expectations for something. When you're not expecting nothing, I don't know about y'all, but I'm one of the people that get one of them notices like, Mr. Poe, can you please go clean out your mailbox? Everything is stacking up on the inside. I'm like, well, I don't know what's coming because I'm not expecting nothing. You know, I'm, I'm a little modern, so all of, all of my bills are on automatic debit. So, hey, look, you guys are already taking my money without my consent anyway. You're, <laughs> I'm not expecting you to mail additional bills to my house, amen. Only thing I'm expecting to arrive at my house is stuff I've ordered and stuff I'm happy to receive, amen. <laughs> and so I don't always go out there, but when I know something is coming, I check it when I'm leaving and I check it when I come home. And that's how our expectations have to be in 2018. When God declares the kingdom of God is at hand, the kingdom of God is the year we're living in, your expectations got to arise. And one powerful thing that God just spoke to me says, you know, we spend a lot of time desiring and going after and asking God for his attributes. But in 2018, he's going to deliver his fullness. Yes, he has healing. Yes, there's peace. Yes, there's joy. Yes, there's wisdom. But all of that comes with God. God doesn't show up incomplete in our lives. But what is our expectation? What were you expecting to happen when God said he's going to get involved in your life? The day you got saved and God says you are now mine, you are a son of mine. God got involved in all of your affairs. Somewhere along the trail, and I'm just going to go ahead and we where are we at right now? Somewhere along the trail, Satan has crept in and told us that, you know, God delivers things one at a time. And so somebody may be believing for a healing, but until I get my healing, I don't need to believe God about this business. No, not in 2018. God's going to heal me, bless my business, and fix my family all at the same time. Amen. Amen. But what we're doing is changing our expectation. And I told him, I said, some of y'all been believing too long for you to finally, God, to finally show up and only do one thing. Like, no, God, no, God, no, <laughs> no. Look, I've been praying. I've been believing. I've been sowing. I've been serving. When you show up, I'm expecting fullness. Amen. 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 But it's a change of our expectation. When you start expecting stuff, you start speaking the stuff. You start speaking to everything. I told him first service, I said, you know, on Friday, I was going to go trade in the car, but the car hadn't been moved in a while. And so the car needed to be needed to have a jump. You know, it's, the, the battery was dead or, or, or on, this, on the car. Well, as you guys know, I'm as you may or may not know, or you may have guessed, I, I'm not a professional at that. <laughs> but to the glory of God in YouTube, I had some instructions. <laughs> so I went in YouTube, you know, how to do this thing. You know, how do you jump a car? And as I was, you know, just YouTubing it and all types of stuff, I heard words like, be careful, it can explode. <laughs> um, this is very dangerous. Don't let these things touch that thing. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a dangerous situation. <laughs> so I called up my brother, Greg. I said, Greg, I said, I'm trying to jump the car. I said, um, I said but you know, I want to do this the right way because it seems like this could be a dangerous situation. He says, well, what are you doing? I said, you know, I got the Range Rover and I'm about to plug the Range Rover. He says, no, 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 you need to switch vehicles just in case something explodes. I says, something, like what type of, what type of explosion are we talking about here? Is this a, 
is this a minor explosion that's controlled? Is this the half of the house is about to blow? What, what explosion are we talking about when we say explosion? And so I said, all right. He's like, but if you follow the instructions, you'll be all right. We'll touch on that later. And I said, okay. And so I went, you know, doing the little instructions and the car, it went crank at first. And so I'm like, okay, and it's, you know, doing the halfway, I'm finna crank. Oh, I didn't crank. You know, it's doing that to you. And so I'm sitting there, I'm saying, well, Greg, you know, it, it didn't crank up right away. He said, well, it's been dead for a while. I said, well, what does that mean? He said, that means you're probably gonna have to let it run for about 10 minutes before you can try again. I said, wait a minute, you want me to let an explosive situation <laughs> run for about 10 minutes? He said, but just watch it and make sure nothing happens. I said, when you say watch it, what, what do you mean? You mean watch close to it or do you mean watch from a distance? Can I see if something's going wrong from a safe distance? He said, well, you know, you got to be close enough to be able to do something about something going wrong. So I grabbed me a stick. I said, this will give me at least, at least about four feet. You know what I'm saying? If something go wrong, I just pop it all off and, and get the ready. And I said, you know what? Oh, this is ridiculous. I said, the, you know what? I'm about to declare the power of God over this situation. I don't have time to waste. This thing is happening today. This car needs to crank, and there don't need to be no explosions taking place, small or large. Amen. So I took that key, put it in ignition, and hit boom. That car said, woof. I said, amen. What am I saying? I'm saying when you expect the kingdom of God to show up in every single situation in your life, it changes your expectations. God is concerned with everything that's concerning you. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. And I'm expecting his power to be revealed in everything that I touch. I was touching that car. And since I'm touching this car, the power of God has the ability to flow through whatever I touch. But what's my expectation? Amen. Amen. I thought you was just telling a funny story, Pastor Brian. No, everything has a point, okay? (laughs) Amen. So y'all ready? Here we go. I'm reading this in the King James Version. It says, but my God, say my God, God. shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that lets us know that Pretty simple, but God is going to supply all of your needs according to what he got. And it says he's going to do it in glory. Glory is the manifestation of his power. So God is going to do what he's going to do to supply your needs by himself, revealing himself in you. And of course, if any of y'all are like me, you know, you're like, okay, my God shall supply all my needs. According to my according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that is powerful. But if a person walks up to me, if if let's say my mama walked up to me right now and said, Brian, I'm going to supply all your needs according to my riches by what's going to show up in the present. And I'm going to say, Mama, if I believe her, how you doing that? Will this be a check? Will this be a debit? Will this, you know, they got this new Apple Cash app. You know, I could just send you something. You can send it. We don't even have to be in the same space. So whenever it's convenient for you, you go ahead and do something about what you say. Amen. What am I saying? When I truly expect this to take place, I want to know the system by which it's going to happen. You know, if I don't have a, a, a bank account and you plan to write a check, give me five minutes, not two weeks. I'm going down to the bank. And if I, if I really think you flighty, I might call somebody I know that already got a bank account. Be like, no, just write the check to them. I don't need you to leave my site. <laughs> you said you was going to supply all my needs and you right here, we right here, your checkbook right here, get the right. I'm not about to take up an offering, y'all. Just relax. Some of y'all was like, this sounds like the perfect offering intro. I'm not, <laughs> not about to take up an offering. But I'm saying, when God says he's going to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, you want to know the system by which this is taking place. I'm glad I have the knowledge to stand on in the scripture that reminds me of the promise. But I, what I need to know is 
where and how does that system work? That's what I want to know. Amen. And that's what we're talking about. That system is called the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing and operating. It's his way of ruling and reigning in our lives. There's a system. And it's called the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And so you want to know, OK, how does this how does this kingdom work? Amen. Amen. Am I the only one asking that question? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're asking that question. Hey, man, it's a good question to ask. If you didn't raise your hand, your expectations is already diminished. And if your expectations are high on receiving all that God has for you by his supply. Hey, man, you ready for some kingdom talk? Hey, man. And so we're going to go to. Um, Mark four and twenty six. And I'm going to read this in the Amplified version. I said, I told him first, I said, you know, the most super thing about God is his ability to work what you naturally have. Amen. The most super thing about God is his ability to work with what you naturally have. The kingdom of God is within your reach. Amen. Amen. One of the greatest lies that Satan has and tries to dispel is that somehow what God has for you is contained in something you don't possess. Right, right, right. Well, God, when I, when, you, when I get that car, God, when I get that job, God, when I get this promotion, God, when I shift this, God, when you change that, then, then I know I'll be ready. And God's like, no, that's not even the beginning parts of what it takes for me to get involved in your life. Understand, I'm supernatural. All right. And the most super thing about my ability is I can work with what you already got. Where do we see this present? We see this present when Jesus multiplied the fish and the loaves. What did he do? The disciples came and said, you know what, Jesus, we might need to send these people home because they're going to get hungry later and we don't have enough food to feed them. And of course, Jesus said, look, I'm sending them folks home. What did he ask them to do? Bring me what you have. Whatever you have, just bring it to me. Whatever you got, just bring it. Then what did he do? As soon as he got it, what did he, he blessed it and presented it before God. But what's the next important thing he did? He started passing it out. Why is that part so important? Because for so many people, what we would have did is said, God, I've taken what I've had. I've presented it to you. But before we start inviting people to eat, I want to see you multiply. Amen. Until I can count up 5,000 or more just for the men, I'm not going to start passing. Oh, glory to God. But Jesus, that ain't what he did. He prayed over it and just started breaking bread and passing out fish. As I am acting out on what God is going to do and God has asked me to do, I'm waiting for his supply, his glory to show up and finish what he told me to start. My job is to present what I have. Oh, goodness. Amen. 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 Mark, we're at Mark 4 and 26, right? And this is, this is Jesus giving an example of the kingdom of God and how it operates. And what we have to realize is when Jesus, Jesus, and we, we talked about this on Wednesday, which I encourage you to get the message, but Jesus would use parables uh, because he transitioned his teaching. You know, at one point, you know, people, he said, I don't want you guys to get dull of hearing, basically. And so God is transitioning. I'm, I'm giving out parables. So what? So I can motivate you to move on what God's telling you to do. 
And he said, I pray that that you guys don't get hard ears, but that your ears and your eyes are blessed to understanding and receiving the kingdom of God in your life. Because the moment that you believe it and you receive it, you're able to walk out on it. And so as we read this, understand that Jesus isn't talking about seeds and plants, but he's talking about an operational system. But he's talking about it in a way that we understand it. Amen. 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 All right. And so it says, I'm starting March for a twist. And he said, the kingdom of God, say the kingdom of God. So we're talking about how it works. He said, it's like a man who scatters seed upon the ground. And I said, seed represents something with potential. That's what seed is. Seed is something that represents something with potential. Seed has potential. Combined with the right stuff, it, it can do something. And so, and it says seed scatters upon the ground. The ground he's represented here is talking about the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things. So what he's saying here is he's saying God has the ability to take anything you have, anything you have that has potential. Being connected with the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things, it has the ability to do this. Y'all ready? He said, and then he continues to sleeping and rising night and day while the seed sprouts up and grows and increases. He knows not. And so he's saying here, the kingdom of God is a system of growth that doesn't require your involvement. He said, the man rises and sleeps, yet it grows and he knows not. Basically saying he don't know how it's happening, but it's happening. So the kingdom of God is like anything you have that has potential. The moment it gets in contact with the kingdom, it has the ability to grow without your involvement. Oh, amen. Amen. And I tell people all the time, that's that that's that moment where you ever been in a situation where you could feel God, but you couldn't see him. Like you just knew. I just know the presence of God is in this situation and I'm not moving because I, I feel him right here. I may not be able to see what's taking place, but I know God is here. And I tell you, that's the place you want to be. The moment that you can feel God and can't see God, what, what he's doing, that means he's working. Amen. 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 God is a revealer. Oh, amen. And he says the earth produces acting by itself. In other words, the earth is what? The kingdom of God. Acting by itself. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And what is he saying? The kingdom of God has a process. It has a way of doing things. It just don't take your involvement to do it. Oh, amen. But when the grain is ripe and permits, immediately he sends forth the reapers and puts in the sickle because the harvest stands ready. And what is he saying? There's there's two things we just could observe from this process of the kingdom. What does it take? Something that you're willing to present. The next thing you do is what? You reap. Oh, amen. 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 Verse 30. And he said, with with what can we compare the kingdom of God? And this is they're asking another question of Jesus at this point. Well, what can we compare as if that wasn't enough? But what, what can we compare the kingdom of God or with what parable shall we use to illustrate and explain it? And then Jesus says, this, he said, it's like a grain of mustard seed. Which when sown upon the ground, the ground is what? The kingdom is the smallest of seeds upon the earth. Yet after it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all garden herbs and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air are able to make nests and dwell in its shade. And that's why I said the kingdom of God is simple. It's a supernatural system. Of growth. Amen. What is a mustard seed? The mustard seed is the smallest seeds you can get. Yeah. And God's saying, 
He ain't talking about seeds. He's talking about us. He's saying, look, whatever it is that you have at whatever state that you're in, no matter what is going on, big, small or in between, if you take whatever it is that you have and plant it into the kingdom of God, it has now been connected with a supernatural system of growth. Yes. Amen. 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 Ooh, amen. amen. Ooh. <laughs> I actually just got tired for a second. <laughs> amen. So then we're going to go to Luke 5 and 5. And I, I was, you know, I used, I like sports, right? And so I, you know, watch sports and, you know, talking to a friend, you know, not, you know, really wanted my team to win or whatever. And of course, you know, the comment was made, you know, well, God don't care nothing about sports. You know, ain't no point in praying over who gonna win. Like you can't pray, God, ain't, God don't care about sports. And then the most interesting thing happened to me. I ran into a professional athlete. I shouldn't say ran to. I actually knew this person. And so I met with him and a professional athlete. And at the end of our conversation, he said, could you pray that I win? <laughs> and my mind got expanded. Because all my life I thought, well, just sports is just something you have fun doing. But no, this is this man's livelihood. And he's a born again believer. If he wins, increase comes into his house. So he is 100% believing God for what? Victory in his situation. God bless me in what I'm doing so that I can have victory in what I'm doing. And it caught me. I said, wait a minute. And it's just that subtle how Satan will come in and tell us that somehow the thing that we're involved in doesn't have kingdom impact. Oh, amen. You're just a this. You're just a that. Well, when you get a this or you get a that or become a this, then God can use you. I don't care if you are passing bread that has expired three years ago and your job responsibility every day is to make sure that it gets thrown out. God can reveal his kingdom where you are. God will get involved and reveal who he is. And I said to myself, I had to catch myself. I said, you know what, God? You do care about sports because there's a bunch of believers running around on those fields, believing God that the best result takes place. Why? Because this ain't a sport for them. It's their job. Amen. Right. Oh, amen. amen. And it just expanded my understanding of how God can use any and everybody. So I do not care where you are right now. I don't care how insignificant people have told you your situation is to impacting anything from God. The moment you take whatever you have, even if it's the smallest of the smallest of mustard seed and commit what it is that you're doing to God and his way of doing things in the kingdom of God, he will supernaturally transform what you're touching into something that will reveal his glory. Everybody's included. Oh, amen. Just really quick, I want to read this before I read from Luke. I'm going to just read it so you guys can hear. But in Psalms 103, in the King James Version, verse 19, it says, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. And that's what, that's what we got to realize. 
God has prepared his throne in heaven. What does he say? He's saying, look, can't nobody knock me off my block because I own the block where my throne is sitting. You see what I'm saying? And so you don't have to worry about whether or not you're connected to the right system or if this system is going to change. This system ain't changing because the place where it's seated and it gets its authority from ain't around here for nobody to knock it over. Amen. God's throne is in heavenly places. And what is he saying? His kingdom ruleth over all. What's all? All is everything. Amen, amen. And that's why I say the kingdom of God can be revealed through any and everything you touch because it rules and reigns over everything. Yes. And I don't have to question if there's been a system update because somebody else has taken authority over 30 percent of my life. Because can't nobody take authority over 30 percent of my life because the king who has 100 percent authority over my life, he has a throne that's not touchable. Amen. 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 All right. So y'all ready? Where, where are we at? Luke, right? So let's go here. Mark 13 and 51 in the message. We're going to read this one real quick before we go there. This right here, boy, if this is like the kids singing brighter, brighter. If this don't set your wood on fire, we, oh, you, oh glory to God. Just come up here and we just lay some hands on you. Amen. <laughs> So Matthew 13 and 51, y'all ready? Matthew, Matthew 13 in the message. And I'm reading the message, verse 51. What I said, I said, I said, Mark, because I'm, that's where I came from. Amen. Matthew 13 and 51, we all there? I mean, I'm cool, man. My wife back there, my baby back there, my mother up here. I got all day. Everybody, you know. Let <laughs> me stop. I'm waiting for everybody to get there. Everybody there? Yes. Amen. I'm just saying, I'm not in a rush. Amen. Amen. Jesus asked, are you starting to get a handle on all this? Are you starting to get a handle of this? Or what the kingdom of God is? It's a supernatural system of growth. Amen. And they answered, yes. yes. He said, then you see how every student well trained in God's kingdom is like the owner of a general store who can put his hands on anything you need, old or new, exactly when you need it. Oh, glory to God. He said, when you get an understanding of the kingdom of God and how it operates, you are like the owner of a general store, able to put your hands on whatever you need, new or old, exactly when you need it. Amen. amen. Oh, amen. We're going to have some people that's able to do any and everything God needs for them to do at the time it needs to be done because they have an understanding of how the kingdom of God operates and they can get access to what's needed right when it's needed. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, amen. How many of you guys know I ain't want my car to start next week? I wanted it to start right then. Yes, yes. Oh, glory to God. I just told you the kingdom of God rules overall. And some of y'all still struggling. God ain't have nothing to do with your car. La, 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 that was just, that was just the timing. It just was, it was just programmed that way. What a... <laughs> you can say what you can say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And my car started. I then took that car, right. drove it down to the dealership. Right. And you know what I wanted it done? Because the car was paid for. Amen. And I was selling the car to get some kingdom increase. Right. And I was ready for some kingdom increase on Friday. Amen. I got some seed I want to sow on a Sunday. So I got some increase I need on a Friday. So this car needs to stop because it's time for it to be traded in for some kingdom advancement resources. Oh, 
y'all ain't y'all y'all who Jesus <laughs> kingdom business yes, yes. kingdom business <coughs> glory to God hey man We'll go ahead and go to Luke 5 and 5. Boy, I have so much here I want to tell y'all. We're going to get to it all, though. But I got to. Amen. Y'all ready? And you guys see the, the background, it says, cast your nets. And this is, this is the story we've been just reading and digesting to understand exactly what that means. Understanding that what was the first thing that had to happen? You, you have to be willing to present what you have. How many of you guys know, you know, praying over the athlete is great. But if he decides not to go to the game, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to just read it. And Jesus stood, I'm reading an easy reader version. And Jesus stood beside Lake Galilee. A crowd of people pushed to get closer to him and to hear the teachings of God. Jesus saw two boats at the shore of the lake. The fishermen were washing their nets. Jesus got into the boat that belonged to Simon. He asked Simon to push off a little from the shore. Then he sat down in the boat and taught the people on the shore. When Jesus finished speaking, he said to Simon, take the boat into the deep water. If all of you will put your nets into the water, you will catch some fish. Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night trying to catch fish and caught nothing. But you say I should put the nets into the water, so I will. The fishermen put their nets into the water. Their nets were filled with so many fish that they began to break. They called to their friends in the other boat to come and help them. The friends came, and both boats were filled so full of fish that they were almost sinking. The fishermen were amazed. All, the fishermen were all amazed at the many fish they caught. When Simon Peter saw this, he bowed down before Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were amazed too. James and John worked together with Simon. James said to Simon, don't be afraid. For now, on your work, will, for now on, your work will be to bring in people, not fish. The men brought their boats to the shore. They left everything and followed Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to cover five points here. Um, like I said, we went in depth in this Wednesday and, and last Sunday. So I'm just going to cover these points there. Amen. Amen. And so lesson one that you can pull out of this story is God will make use of every resource you're willing to give and so to advance his kingdom. You know, Jesus didn't ask Peter to go make him a new boat because the son of God is prepared to use it. Jesus said, no, I can use your boat. What do you have? What do you have? And many times we've heard this over and over again. If you've been to church, people say, I'm, I'm waiting to get right before I give my life over to God. And of course, we've learned to understand that you can't get right for God. God's the one who's going to get you right. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, look, God, God can use whatever you have. He didn't look at Peter and say, look, I am the son of God. I am here. 
to bring a resurrection power to all of y'all lives. You should be willing, at least, Peter, to build a new boat for me to use. No, no, I'll use what you have. He'll use what you have. Amen. Amen. Lesson two. When God is ready and desiring to jump into your situation, and I use that word intentionally, to jump into your situation, be prepared to receive them. Spirit didn't say, hey, nah, Jesus, I know you want to use my boat, but my boat ain't fit yet. My, my boat ain't, 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 ain't save your status. No. God, you want in, you can have in. I receive you into my life. And God wants to be involved with the affairs of your life. And when he comes and knocking, you open that door and you let him in. Amen. Lesson three. The assignment in your harvest aren't always located in the same location. We have to continue to hear after the assignment is complete. And I, I saw my father walk this out so very often. He would travel the places and do things that there was no way the people he was going to reach could even think about affording the expense it took for him to go. And they were so amazed that Pastor Pope, I remember one time, was it Norway, Mama, or somewhere up in there? Norway. What did it cost? Almost $47,000 or something. It was a lot. <laughs> What's my point? It, was, it wasn't a lot in their minds. It was a lot in all of our minds. This is what I'm saying. It wasn't just a lot in their minds. It was a lot in all of our minds. God said, go. That was the assignment. Pastor didn't show up in Norway and say, so how are y'all going to pay for all that's happening here? And he didn't even wait for them to sow a seed to try to even pay for all that took place. No, this is the location of my assignment. Yes. Glory, glory. My harvest and my assignment aren't always located in the same place. And a lot of times as believers, we find ourselves in the location of our assignment saying, this is where I work. God, you got to do it right where I'm looking. And God's like, no, that's what. That's, that was your location of your assignment. Going up to Miss Olivia and saying, I've been serving the soul. I've been serving the nursing home ministry for 15 years. I figure y'all owe me something over here. <laughs> I mean, it's been 15 years. No. Jesus taught from the shore. But the harvest was located in the deep. Yeah. The, to receive the harvest from the assignment took an act of faith. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Lesson four, your past failures do not have an effect on God's ability to provide in your future. In the same place that yielded no fruit, that yielded no fish, was the same location that harvest abounded, Amen. that took many to bring in. Amen. What am I saying? I'm saying that God's not limited to your history of how things have worked. God has the ability. We're, we're, okay, God. Our expectations are for God, his glory, his power, his ability to show up in our lives. As a result, our history 
does not play a track record on his ability to do that. God can send you to the same spot that once yielded nothing and create a harvest in that same spot that will change lives. Brian, why are you saying this right now? Because we're expecting God to show up in every area of your life. And I don't want, as you're walking out 2018, the God to tell you to, to return to some places where you've been and you say, I'm not willing to go based on the history. When God's trying to tell you, yeah, I told you to go back to that same spot that you've been before. Because this time you're not waiting on what you could produce, but you're waiting on what I've already supplied there. Oh, my God. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I hear God telling me to make it plainer. Now allowing God to have the ability to use everything that he can make available is like saying you refuse to drive the same roads to work every day. How many of you guys know that's only one trip? Because the day you pull out your driveway, the day you pull out your apartment comp, the day you pull out of wherever you live, you're going to have to repeat a, a traveling method that you already traveled before. Telling God or having the mindset that God can't take something that has in the past been a place of no victory. And believe that he in that same place can cause victory is like saying you refuse to drive the same road to work every single day. Amen. Okay. I want to move on, but God ain't letting me. Your. All things are new in Christ. Every single thing is new. Every single thing is new. Every single thing is new. Things that once failed that you tried will now have victory, great victory in your life because of your understanding of how it works. Okay, okay, okay. Many of y'all have gone to school, failed it. Many of y'all have tried businesses and they fail. Many of y'all have applied for jobs and you didn't get it. Applied for houses that you didn't get. Many of y'all have, have, have attempted to do what, what, what you could do concerning what you believe God was telling you to do. And they didn't work out right. And what I am telling you today. Because of the kingdom of God that is to be revealed in 2018. None of that matters. Some of y'all are about to apply for jobs that you got denied for last week. That you are about to be hired for this week because of your expectation of God being revealed and what happens. You are about to say, no, I have power. I have authority. I exist and live in the kingdom of God. And he rules and reigns over everything that I touch. Oh, oh make it. Pl I tried cranking the car two times before it started. On the third time, I reminded myself who I was. 
Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because one of Satan's greatest attempts is to get you to believe in order for God to do something, it has to be something new. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. God can fix the marriage you have. What are you expecting? What do you want? What has he shown you? Amen. Amen. I believe y'all got it down. Don't put any limits on God. My dad used to tell us this all the time. He said, if someone told you no, you just talking to the wrong person. He said, if yes is the answer and you keep hearing no, you just talking to the wrong person. God is about to take what you have. Uh, lesson five. <laughs> oh, this, well, this guy kind of spoke it already. <laughs> Once you've had an encounter with God, you won't just grow, but you will be transformed. That's right. After Peter's encounter with, with the supernatural power of the kingdom of God, he was no longer a fisherman, but he was now transformed into a fisher of men. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say this and uh, I'm going to close. But uh, why don't you go to Hebrews 11 and 6. I'm not going to shortchange y'all. I said some of this stuff first service. I'm going to say it again. Amen. Keep going there, and I'm just going to throw this in the middle. Amen. Amen. But God spoke this to me. He said, you know, we have to understand that your plan is only good as the motivation it supplies to get you moving. Your plan is only as good as the motivation it supplies to get you moving. Your spirit is ready to soar. Your spirit is ready to go. It's our natural mind that has to be renewed. Yes. So God will give you a vision and a plan so clear, so precise, that you will tell your natural man, there is no way I'm sitting still. Yes. But what we have to realize is, is we believe in a verse in Ephesians 3.20 that said God will do exceedingly abundantly above whatever we plan, imagine, or think. And so as I see this plan, at some point, the transformative power of God is going to hit this plan and do something I cannot see. Amen. And I told him, I said, you know, one thing I've, I've, I've never noticed, you know, I've never noticed this before was, I've, I've never seen a GPS give instructions until I started moving. And I've never seen a GPS give adjustments to my path until I started moving. And see, many people are waiting for the Holy Spirit to lead in and guide them, but they aren't moving anywhere. God is going to take control over the situation that you have been planning and seeing 
that plan, that vision is set to get you moving. As you start to move and walk out what God has shown you at some point, God is going to show up in the midst of it and do what only he can do. Hey, man, y'all working me so hard. (laughs) This was actually funny. I actually had like a little preacher joke earlier. Um, You know, and I I said, you know what's so interesting? A lot of people, you know, they, they, they meet, you know, a preacher that they've seen or watched, and they go and they meet him, you know, outside of the pulpit, and they say, man, he, you know, he was... It's kind of normal, like, he was slightly boring a little bit. I mean, he was very engaging and and all types of stuff when he was teaching. But then we went to dinner and, you know, he was was kind of, I won't use the word bland. But the, the brother was a little bland, you know? What happened? God will use whatever and whomever is willing to present whatever they have to deliver a message on his behalf. If you have enough confidence, enough trust in what God is speaking to you, you will step out there and allow God to intervene at some point and take over what's supposed to happen. Now, some of y'all are looking real funny, but I'm talking about myself. <laughs> Listen to me. Satan tried so hard to tell me I wasn't qualified for what I'm doing. And I was probably very unqualified as long as I was sitting still. Ooh. But the moment I decided to go ahead and say, God, you've given me a message. I can see what you want me to say. I'm willing to step out there knowing what you've shown me, believing that, God, the whole point is at some point you were supposed to show up in the midst of me walking this out, use parts of me that I didn't even know existed to do what only you could do. Amen. 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 All right. So, uh uh-oh. Where's my phone? My uh, my iPad went dead. I told him, I told him first service, I said, you know, my dad used to say, you know, if you, if you see a preacher and his, and his Bible don't look like it's being used, like it's, you know, look brand new, you might want to, you might want to verify some things. <laughs> the, the, the sign that his Bible was, was falling apart was, you know, a sign that he was using it. And in 2018, let me tell you something, if you run into a preacher and his iPad is on 100%, all the time. <laughs> I said, the fact that my iPad is dying is just evidence that it's being used. Amen. <laughs> oh, glory to God. All right. Amen. Yeah, I want I wanted to say this, and this is where we're going to end. But what, and we're going to dive into this in the, in the upcoming weeks. But what we have to realize is there's weight to the nets. What did those nets weigh for Peter? It took trust. If I, I'm done for the day, but here you are asking me to pick up these nets and travel back out. His nets cost him trust. 
His nets, they, they, they had the weight of time. They didn't use modern nets like we have nets nowadays, but they had to clean their nets after their use. Otherwise, they would break down and become brittle. And so the fact that you're telling me to go back out and cast nets in waters that I, I'm going to have to redo this process. It's going to cost me my time. And Peter wasn't a follower of Jesus quite yet. And so I'm pretty sure the people that was uh, working for him was wanting some wages for the time you asking us for. Those nets that Peter dropped, those nets that were casted had weight. And that's what God wanted me to present to you guys today. Don't be afraid of the weight of your nets. I would be lying to you if I told you it wasn't going to cost you something. It's going to cost you obedience. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, how do you seek the kingdom of God? One act of obedience after the next. Being okay with the weight of the nets. Sometimes those nets cost you forgiveness. Sometimes those, those nets, they cost you trust. Sometimes those nets, they cost you time. But we're not afraid of casting our nets into the deep because we understand the process in which is involved. There is a kingdom supernatural system of growth connected to the acts of obedience I do that God instructs me to do. Amen. Amen. And so we're going we to spend the next few weeks just talking about it, talking about that operation, talking about understanding, man, you know what? I, I am, and if you ask them, Brian, what is your, what is the motivate? What are you trying to say? I'm saying in 2018, let's not leave any act of obedience unfulfilled. Let's fulfill every single thing that God is instructing us to do. Amen. Amen. Amen.